I visited Fukuoka Sun's natural farm in Shikoku Island in the bad in springtime. But when I returned to downtown Tokyo where I live, living with nature of the earth seemed like something from another world. I myself have never been conscious that I live on the earth. I have never talked about the earth with anybody in the city. Everyone who lives in the town also works for family and tries to live correctly and more truthfully. We are living on the earth, but we hardly see the earth itself. When I encountered Fukuoka-san, I felt he's a person who looks at the earth. It is said, four billion years ago, the first life on the earth appeared in the ancient ocean. Then the land surfaced. 450 million years ago, ozone layers covered the earth. Green plants spread over the land and animals also began to live there. Then everywhere, a variety of living things thrived. The Earth became a planet of living things, a planet with an ecosystem. The planet's ecosystem is the earthy mechanism that allows a variety of living things to live in symbiosis. By that symbiosis, the number of living species is balanced. The ecosystem also circulates in organic matters, water, air, and soil, balancing all matters of the earth. Humankind emerged only two million years ago. Humans accumulated knowledge and established civilization. Never looking back to the ecosystem, but rather changing the environment and monopolizing the gifts of nature, then humanity's descendants have thrived. Mesopotamia, Egypt, Indus, China, civilizations prospered and disappeared one after another. These sites were covered with rich green forests, but have now become deserts. You can't see any living things. In the 16th century, when Magellan set sail around the world, it was believed that the world was vast with inexhaustible natural resources. Within 500 years, the human population swelled to 6 billion and the global economy has been consuming earthly resources at a dreadful pace. As a consequence, many living things were killed and the ecosystem's balance was changed, no longer giving us so much fruits as before. Human population will be up to 10 billion in the 21st century. I wonder if humanity can survive in peace and prosperity. For the past 60 years, Fukuoka-san has been insisting that all methods of agriculture destroy the earthly ecosystem. He has been flatly opposing present farming methods that destroy living things in natural symbiosis. They have only increased the quantity of crops and domestic animals for human sake. Fukuoka-san advocated an entirely new way of farming and put it into practice. Natural farming employs no plowing, no seedling, no watering, no fertilizer, no pesticides, and no weeding. All we do is wrap many kinds of seeds in clay bowls and just keep sowing them. Then do nothing, just leave everything to nature. A variety of fruits, vegetables, rice and wheat would grow along with all other kinds of plants, weeds and trees. Seasonable birds, insects, bacteria and small animals. They all live together with plants in symbiosis and create a rich natural farm. To this day, Fukuoka-san has written seven books on natural farming 
religion and philosophy. Once the Law Revolution, released in 1975, was translated into 15 languages and acclaimed all over the world. Since 1979, when he met the director of the United Nations program against desertification, he has been making tours to many countries, employing his unique criticism of civilization, and he has been sowing the seeds of natural farming in the world. For this distinguished work, in 1988, he was given Deshkottam Award and the Lamo Mangsai Sai Award. Then in 1997, he received also the Earth Council Award. In October 1997, Kokasan was invited to India to attend the international seminar to commemorate Mahatma Gandhi. In India, his book One Stroll Revolution was published in 1984. Since then, many farms began natural farming. During his 19 days stay there, he visited many places to give lectures and field teachings. This year was the 50th anniversary of Indians' independence and the father of independence Mahatma Gandhi. Kokasan was also invited to the celebration as a special guest. The seminar was held in the town of Guarda, 630 kilometers inland from Mumbai. During the seminar, asked by farm owners and researchers, he gave many lectures and clay ball workshops in a series of day trips. Fortunately, after 60 years practice, there is no cultivation, no fertilizer, no chemicals, no weeding. I finally can grow any crops with natural farming. Natural farmers says no to science. All sciences, no. No, thank you. No, nothing. Only scattling clay balls. This is the mixture of science and religion. This person is asking you if natural farming means to change one's lifestyle. To change the lifestyle, should one restrain one's worldly desires? But, but probably no, no. the present economy will go down in the next 10 years or so. It will certainly collapse, I think. Let it happen. The resource of the earth, nature, will go down, down, down. The possibility of the survival of the economy is rapidly decreasing. There will be no water, no green, no energy, no oil. These elements of the present economy will be gone and lost by the year 2000. This year is also crazy. Last May, during one month period, four TV crews, NHK, High Vision and such visited me. Why did those four TV crews visit me in one month? This is the proof of Japanese society being in chaos and confusion. Everyone is lost, not knowing which way to go. This is what Japanese are like these days. 
Now the world is looking to India and Gandhi's ideals. People are hoping that India or China will save the world. Embodied there is Gandhi's philosophy and religion. This would save the 21st century. If this perishes, the earth perishes. Within the next 10 or 20 years, the destiny of the earth will be decided. The earth could be saved by Gandhi's love and philosophy. That's what I think. What do you think? Do you give it up altogether? Long ago I gave up the fate of the earth, totally in despair of mankind. If you don't save, the earth won't be saved. Oh, it's so big, looking graceful, like a queen. I have a small vermary over here. You made a mistake. Why? You did plow. You planted seedlings. You water. All efforts, mistakes. That was the start of killing soil. Killing seems to soften the soil, but that is not true. If you water it, it turns hard. The soil here is hard, and the root can't go down deep. It's the disease called gomahagare bio, caused by a fungus. Looking at this only, I can see how you made a mistake. Here, here's rice. If they pop out now, they will hardly bear rice. Obviously, the seeding time for this rice was not right. I always say, make mistakes three times. I mean, change the seeding time three times. Try three different times and you hit the right time to sow the seeds. Don't worry this failure. Never give up. Sow the rice a month earlier or a month later again and you succeed. Is this the same man or not? It is from the book uh, one straw revolution. Uh, Which one? So your nephew. Uh -huh. My niece has drawn it. Her name is yes. <laughs> this forever. This man never gets old. You mean this man is forever? I should say so. This man never dies. No die. <laughs> Through a microscope, I used to look into the dunk of cows, horses, hens and goats to search for something like bacteria. In my early twenties, I always asked questions about nature why, why, why? Searching bacteria, reading books. I tried to find a better farming method. It is better. Is that better? Then one day I realized this. Wisdom of man is of no use. All we do with man's knowledge leads to the destruction of nature. Not doubting, believe in nature. If only revive nature, mankind can live. No thinking, doing nothing. That's the starting point. If you doubt, you can't do natural farming. Start by looking at the way birds, rats, wheels act. We humans are only destroying nature. They are desperately preserving nature. Natural farming needs no books. In my books, I wrote books are useless. When I was young, I used to say this way, that should be done, this should be done. I want manure, I want fertilizer, but no thank you, no need anything. Only thing left is sowing seeds, only that. Just enjoy, play like a child. 
throw them 100 meters away. Children in Tanzania would sow seeds this way, bam, using rubber like this. <laughs> one more, one more. It will automatically. You say plow and the plants grow, but it's different. As for plowing, trees plow, moles plow, earthworms plow. Along with them, lots of roots of trees are plowing soil. Well, using cattle, there are times we need to plow a little bit, only slightly, on the surface of land. No, even a little bit on the surface, whether the soil is mixed deeply or shallowly, bees will grow. Once plowed, however slightly, 10, 20, 30 year old weed seeds will sprout and grow. The more you plow, the more weeds grow, but if you sow clover or alfalfa, the weed will recede. There grow vegetables. Among the vegetables, sow the seeds of fruits and trees, not after plowing. You should start from the fundamental idea. I want to say this if making detour. You said no rain around here, they can. The true reason of lack of rain is no trees. No trees, no rain. You believe rain falls down from above, but it is not. Make a condition to produce plentiful water. That's the start. I'm now talking about the important issue. Please be quiet and listen. Before going to the field, you must understand the important creed. If not, it's useless to see your farm. You may have been trying natural farming, but you haven't understood the starting idea, I should say. You may have a fixed idea, that what you see here is the natural environment of Deccan. Lack of water didn't happen naturally. You made the water disappear. Nobody answered when I asked you where water came from. Then you went to another topic. See, in fact, this is making rainfall. This leaf this flower and this tree. It all started out when the variety of plants were limited to five to ten kinds. Here in Deccan, there is no rain and no trees. Here under the tree and this grassy pot, if you watch the difference of temperatures, you see why it is so hot here. Lots of radiant heat, bacteria in soil, fungus and virus, they are no longer in natural order and that makes hard for you to grow crops. Such a disorder, the origin of the present unnatural state of Deccan is human. To start natural farming, you should know how silly and how ignorant human is. That's the start. I hear there are 20 villages around here. If these people cooperate to work on 10,000 hectares of the land, it will be green and cool, then the rain will fall. Whether these people come to have the same idea is the start. If they use human knowledge, it will fall apart. You can do nothing. After 10 years, 20 years, nothing would be accomplished. For example, this here is unnatural. This should have grown to one thick branch, like this, straight up. From this point, this would be from seedling, then 
came to unnatural. It was from layering. In this case, the start was unnatural. So these came out unnaturally. But now it's too late. Straight. There are two, there are two. And this way, this way, between these, this one grows that way. This way. These two are out. This way, this one is natural. If you cut one like this, like this, this comes to this. Well, unnatural start indeed. If a man touches a little, it starts unnaturally. This one also had a natural start. So change it to natural way in the first three years. Make it natural style. Upward. So this is unnatural start. This is downward growth. So unnatural indeed. On the slant, this is natural. Leave natural branches uncut. Do nothing but cut the unnatural branch at the point. So plenty of sunshine. Every leaf gets sunlight and will no longer be infected. This is original and precious. You should cherish this. Better. Good. This should be shared with the people of poor countries. For three years, we haven't done anything. But only one time, when we planted vegetables, we plowed slightly on the surface of the soil. In my case, before growing rice, I grow barley. Next, rice, barley, rice, and always, all through the year, underneath is covered with clovers, small clovers, there. One month before reaping, so barley balls in these rice plants. Before harvest, next crop must be growing. Here, before this is cut down, next crop of barley must be growing, like this. Keep stepping on these and cut them down. Fukuoka-san's rice cropping is an entirely new and original method which was established by long-term trial and error. He grows wheat and rice alternately on the same farmland. You may choose any breed of wheat or rice. Find appropriate breed for the land and give it a try. See if it grows with a rotation cropping. He employs no plowing no watering and no use of fertilizer or pesticides. Growing clover on the ground restrains the growth of weeds. According to his method, when green leaves are turning yellow, so the clay balls that contain wheat seeds and clover seeds on the farmland. If the land is so weedy, simply sow as many clay balls as possible. Next year, one month prior to harvesting, while wheat is shooting ears, scatter rice clay balls on the farm. A month later, cut the stems of wheat at the root and have them threshed. Scatter straw at full length evenly in all directions on the field. You will see clover growing out of the layers of straw. Next, rice will germinate. You may irrigate the field to eliminate weeds. However, do not irrigate unless the soil is dried out. As long as the soil retains any slight moisture, 
leave the land unirrigated. Fukuoka-san explains, standing water in the field weakens the crop roots and that results in insect damage. Fifteen days before harvesting, while rice is shooting ears, scatter wheat clay balls on the field. While treating on wheat crops, harvest rice. Have rice crops threshed, and then scatter straw at the full length all over the field. In the layers of straw are a variety of living things which enriches the soil, and in that soil, crops shoot the roots more vigorously. With natural farming, you don't interfere with the crops, but only at some crucial point, give them a hand just a little. It is a hard farming method. However, Fukuoka-san says it is farming everyone can do by paying attention to the crops properly. Continue with patience until strong healthy ears are to shoot. Fukuoka-san's rice crop is less than one meter tall and has large ears that never hang down but shoot straight up. Its roots are thick and well set. All the living things on the farm are always busy plowing the soil. Fukuoka-san says that in 30 years of his natural farming, his topsoil became twice as deep. Each ear of rice bears 200 to 300 grains. From one hectare of land, he could harvest rice in average of 5 to 6 tons or even 10 tons and wheat in average of 5 tons. The most significant thing of Fukuoka-san's natural farming is clay balls. These clay balls are the essence of natural farming, which Fukuoka-san has established after years of trial and error. Seeds wrapped in the clay ball will not be eaten by birds or insects. Thus, you don't need to till the farmland. All necessary conditions for sprouting is minimized to this one clay ball. Materials needed are clay, sieve, washed up, water, and plant seeds. Find a clay of fine texture, a rather sticky type. Two types of balls for different use. One is for growing a wholesome natural farm, and the other for rice and wheat growing. In case of growing natural farm, collect as many kinds of seeds as possible including vegetable, fruit, tree, and green manure like clover. It is the same case when revegetating the desert. Wash the seeds of vegetables and fruits gathered from the kitchen and leave them to dry. While you take a walk, look at the plants you come across and pick the seeds from them. The beginning of natural farming is to collect the seeds as a daily routine. For growing rice, prepare grains of rice only. Either paddy or apron rice is fine. As for wheat, mix clovers in wheat grains. Let me explain the way of making clay balls. First, dry the clay. Then using stones or something hard, crush the clay to fine soil. Remove organic matter like leaves and twigs and screen the clay until it is powdered. Mix a variety of seeds in the clay at a proportion of one seed to seven parts clay until it becomes even. Beans soaked in water for a day are useful material. These swollen beans prevent the clay balls from cracking. Keep mixing them by adding water. Knead it well as if you are kneading a dough until it is as elastic as an earlock. Beat it until air bubbles are removed. Take off small bulb clay in diameter of 1 to 1.5 cm and with both hands crample it to a pellet. With large sized seed, make a larger pellet to fully enclose the seed. With all the seeds wrapped in and the surface smoothed, the clay bowl is done. Make the surface smooth with no cracks or seeds so that the seeds will not be eaten by birds or insects. 
If the boards are not for immediate use, leave them to dry in a shady, breezy area. Dry clay boards will keep for many months. Be aware that they may germinate if kept in a warm, humid place. In case of making a large quantity of clay balls, use a concrete mixer. Tools and materials to prepare are a mixer, a water spray, a large quantity of seeds and clay powder. Place the concrete mixer with no shuttlecock and clean the inside of the mixer by scraping off excess concrete from the surface. By using a mixer, each seed will make one ball. Sort out the seeds by size or shape, one group at a time, moisten them, sprinkle the clay powder on them, and put them in the mixer. In a rolling mixer, add clay powder and spray the water alternately. When each seed coated in clay has doubled in size, have them rolled for another 3-4 minutes. The work is completed when the balls are glossy. Be aware that with over rolling, the balls will be stuck to each other. Each mixing for 15 to 20 minutes will produce a large amount of clay balls. Sowing clay balls take place in general, either in the time when blooming is over and green leaves are turning yellow or before rainy season. On desert, wilderness, river banks, open lots and fallow land, you can grow a natural farm in any place. In desert, you may keep sowing for years to come until the living things in nature are revived. As land revives, living things from natural farm will provide us with a share of plentiful crops. You may think it's useless to sow all these, nothing will come out, but it's not so. They will come out soon, and these will come out later. God, nature, decides the right time. Nature chooses the best time for planting. Think nothing. Just learn how to sow a lot of seed balls. You will surely succeed if you make good seed balls. They seem to have grown nicely though. Half of the crops is suffering from virus. For the last 100 years, we have had this virus problem. But in the past 50 years, the problem became worse. By now, viruses are the cause of the worst sickness in plants. One kind of virus. This is one kind of virus. It makes the leaves shrink, a shrinking type, so to speak. And another type of virus causes yellow and green stripes on the leaves. Some grow gigantic, on the contrary, others shrink. All these are due to the infected seeds. Moreover, suppose we plant the leaves like this. The worst case is when the mere sap touches the crops around, they will get infected. These viruses are spreading all over the earth. This one is suffering from the most serious damage. This is incurable, like AIDS. It is hard to cure. There is no medicine to cure this. There are three major causes of plant disease. Virus, bacterium, and fungus. What is fungus? Fungus, that is mold. These are green soybeans that give 60 to 70 marks. Good crops, well done. Good breed. They don't have enough bacteria on root tubercles. 
This is the disease caused by mold. Here, this one bears nothing. No beans, you see. All things considered, I recommend trees such as teak, acacia, Maria Azadrak, and Baobab. It is so wide here. Mix them all together. Here and there are big trees. On this farm, trees as tall as 50 to 100 meters should have naturally grown. Then underneath there are big trees. Bananas, papaya, durian, and guava can grow. In the first five to ten years, vegetables can grow under these fruit trees. Do it yourself, with your own hands, with a sense of hands. You will know whether the soil is right or not. Where the clay is sticky, by which degree it sticks, you know what is right texture. If you grow only one type of vegetable, the land eventually becomes sterile. No rainfall, you have troubles. In America, California, Oregon, and everywhere, everything is mistaken. If you apply modern farming method, every land would turn to desert. Even if there are forests there, their quality is very poor. And they have the fruits farms there, but they can't grow the crops without three equipments, sprinkler, heater, and cooling fans. Organic farming is a mistake. It is only for human benefits. Organic farming uses manures from cattle or compost. I use neither chemical fertilizer nor organic fertilizer. People say, I want this car or that car, I want electric machines, airplanes, but all these desires are directly linked to human miseries, unnatural. Now nature is down with human civilization. We have noticed, civilization eventually destroys humans themselves. It's obvious now. In the 21st century, there will come the age of going to nature. Modern farming or natural farming, your choice will determine whether the earth perishes or not. Is it mundane, common people's issue, worrying if it will survive to the year 2020? What do you think? People in India would generally say that it is a matter determined by God. We don't need to worry about it. You are right. But suppose the living thing in nature, like birds or dogs or gods, they wouldn't resist, or they resist passively. All plants, animals around the Gandhi's trees, like acacia, which makes rain fall. All these are being killed silently. Shouldn't we humans resist on behalf of living things in nature? And they too reliant on so-called God's mercy? Well, of course, humans would also make efforts, but ultimately we leave it to the discretion of 
God. If humans make the utmost efforts, authors of those books must have done their best. Gandhi also made desperate efforts. Others wouldn't do their best. And they are only praying for God's help, hoping somebody will solve the problem in the end. So we pass the same thing by this way. Smells good. You can eat any natural things grown locally. Don't eat this, don't eat that, don't eat meat, you may say. What is wrong is eating too much of it. Eat well-balanced food. Live naturally. You should be a part of nature. Anything natural which man eats is his natural food. In India, only cattle are increasing. Some say no beef, others no pork, and you get confused by religious doctrines. If we have genuine nature, we would have right faith, religion, right science, and right philosophy. As nature goes unbalanced, religion, philosophy, anything else go crazy. Because it is in nature that he is natural. What would you suggest? Would you offer yourself to the lion? In nature, human could be eaten by lions. Is it okay with you? You'd be eaten by lions? Exactly. I have lived long enough already. I should be eaten by lions or dolphins and Ganges. Lions would be happy.
Fukuoka-san has visited a group of farmers in the town of Warda. They started natural farms there 10 years ago. Natural. Uh, no manual has been given to this plant for since last three years. Ah, three years. Nothing was done. Nothing was done. In five or ten years, it became like this. Isn't it almost a natural farm? They intended to make that way. By plowing, fertilizing, and spraying pesticides, the idea to grow trees and plants this way was a big mistake. This tall golden rod flower, even this one flower, one leaf, this one leaf, humans cannot create these. Humans can live by themselves. Humans can produce crops by themselves. This idea is an arrogance of human wisdom. You water the crops here, but there are trees called happy tree here. There must be enough water underground. If only one root, if one big straight root goes deeper, then no need to water anymore. These days, you water the plants with sprinklers. That makes ten short roots grow near the topsoil. These roots are weak when drought comes. So here too, like on my farm, you should not water plants. Water irrigation? No, thank you. त्या तुमच्या घराजवळ लावू नका कारण बावबावचा झाड हा प्रचंड वृक्ष होतो तर नाव काय सांगत आपण ही वॉन्ट्स टू से इफ धिस मच इज पॉसिबल विदाउट डुईंग एनिथिंग और बाय डुईंग नथिंग इफ यू आर डुईंग समथिंग इट इज युअर इग्नरन्स ऑफ नेचर मे बी अनादर काइंड लाईक Acacia uh -huh. and kiwi fruits, like uh -huh. in his farm, uh -huh. he doesn't take harvest. He just leave to the animal and insects in his farm, and it, then it is here. Right, it is here. So tell him it is here. Uh -huh. Same. See, what we want to say. See, there is no irrigation. Over a See, there is no irrigation, no watering, no fertilizer chemical. Right. Okay. But even though the same yeah. plant is produced 300 and 400 coconuts here. I see. I see. For instance, this tree has much moisture like this. Look, Koka-san, water is dripping. Like baobab tree. Oh, like baobab tree. But yeah. he uses this as a plant indicator right. to give next water. Uh, if this plant wilts, right. he gives water, not otherwise. In the speeches I made in America, I told them rain does not fall down from the sky, nor from the ground. Plants make rainfall. Grow a lot more plants, a paradise will be realized. Nature is God, and God is here, and the God provides rain for us. This is a plot where man is not allowed to step in. A man goes only to collect fruits from the ground, or from the coconut plot. There were fungus and then that is why these ants came and eat them. Life is supported by life.
डोंट डू एनीथिंग लिव लेट लिव ते तरखा होणार औषध मारलं तर हेच मारून जाणार तर अशा पक्षी येतात आणि नारळाची किड खाऊन पक्षी Nature makes such a wonderful paradise. Here grows coconut plants all the time. Look at the rice field there, very beautiful. So when we leave nature to nature, this world is gonna be paradise. Okay. He saw some vegetables. Yes, they are vegetables. And if there is more different kind of vegetables, it's here much better. I'll show you the vegetables which is growing here. Now this is a leafy vegetable. This is a leafy vegetable. So we we eat this leaf? Yes, we eat this. So how about root vegetables? Uh, this also produces roots, okay. which we use as a root vegetable. Koi mo janai ka? Now I am satisfied. No need to visit other farms. I want to tell the world this is a real paradise. हे फार चांगला करता म्हणता तुम्ही डू नथिंग इज द बेस्ट डू नथिंग डू नथिंग हेज बेस्ट आहे Indeed, some differences in the kind of plants here, but this is almost the same with my farm. No, it's better here, the best in the world. This farm is similar to his farm, but this farm is much nicer than him. Europe, America, America, Europe, Africa, India, Thai, Birma, no, come on, then, this place. He's been to Africa, India, and Thailand, Vietnam, USA, but this farm is the best, he said. Yeah. <laughs> At last, humans have come to realize that. This is the best, but birds, animals, many insects and underground microorganisms, they have realized this earlier. Japanese are the last to realize this, so they have spoiled the earth to this extent. But animal or insects and bio organisms, they knew before. If you open your mouth facing upward, Guava will fall down into your mouth. Uh, Proverb pro in Philippines, uh -huh. uh, like people lazy and then open, open their, their mouth, mouth and then and fruit. Yeah. Banana gets it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. We have jamun getting in. Jamun. Jamun fruit. Jamun fruit. Jamun fruit. Jamun fruit. Well, if I open my mouth here, <laughs> that coconut would fall down my head. <laughs> Burn. Pura <laughs> Huantama. <laughs> त्याचं म्हणणं असं की एक आळशी म्हणून खाली झोपला आणि नारळचा डोक्यात पडला तर काय होईल लुकिंग बॅक आय सपोज दॅट अवर डे टू डे लिव्हिंग अँड द वे ऑफ अवर सोसायटी इज बिकम व्हेरी फार फ्रॉम वर्किंग ऑफ द इयर्स How should we live collectively, truthfully, as humans? We always ask such questions to ourselves. But we probably mistook the most essential point in our questions. Our lives are built on the workings of the earth. Such a common fact. To live means to live on the earth. From now on, I would rather pose the question this way. How should we live correctly on this earth? Look 
This lawn is the beginning of European civilization. Nowadays, the tops around the world love life with lawns. Upper class houses have very beautiful lawns, both in Europe and in America. But if you grow the lawn, earthworms and moles would disappear. Even if you live like a king, please consider moles and earthworms. Here, they are flying. So many there. Small insects. They are unka, a kind of rice insect. The worst harmful insect to rice. They live here. If other insects lived here, balance would be recovered. But too many of them here. Simple, so it looks beautiful. But in simple vegetation, one kind of insect increases. That leads to the desert. These greens here look the very best for humans. But for other animals or insects, this is the beginning of a tragedy. At present, we have on one hand European culture. On the other hand, Indian culture like Hinduism and Buddhism. This garden, on this hand, other fields, on this hand, in conclusion, observing which is better, please put both hands together. Natural farming is a new alternative way of agriculture. By sowing many kinds of seeds, we simply give all living things a chance to revive the ecosystem. Then we would be given a portion of food yielded naturally. Try to observe living things. Try to have another look at how the earth works. From that viewpoint, we may discover something new. For the sake of children, for our future, and to live in a positive light on this earth. <laughs>